that's how I got introduced to the music industry. Because I swear I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music. Yeah. <laughs> but it didn't work out, so I sold my soul to the dip. Sold my soul to the dip. I made a dip bargain with it, you know, a long time ago, and I'm holding up my hand. What was your bargain? To get where um, I am now. Should I ask who you made the bargain with? with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and on this earth, and in, uh, in the world we can't see. I'm very much into philosophy. A lot of different philosophers that I've read over the years, like uh, Nietzsche, uh, Darwin, Freud, uh, Alistair Crowley, and uh, finally Anton LaVey. And uh, fortunately, he's you know, still alive, so I get to meet with him and talk about his ideas and things like that. And uh, in America, Satanism is uh, sensationalized and kind of misunderstood, and people associate it with worshiping the devil and things like that. But it's really a philosophy about uh, individuality and self-preservation. It's about uh, you know being your own god. So. You know, had, had we sold our soul to the devil? Uh, how else can you explain us being here on the <laughs> uh, These two guys sold our soul to the devil. Uh, how else can you explain us being here on the <laughs> <day? laughs> How do these two guys get on that show? Think about it. No, as, as, as like summon Satan, and I, I write about how I, I made it. I Where do you summon no, Satan? It's, no. it's, Chapter called Eat, Pray, Love, Conjure Satan. <laughs> and when I was 12 years old, I signed a, a deal with Satan in my room because I wanted to get famous no matter what. It made me want to go back to Satan worship. <laughs> well, that's not your work for me. It got me a career. You don't get this right now, I swear to Lucifer, I'm gonna, you know, I get a little bit mad. In the music industry, it's still very much this exploitative thing. It's still very much people sure. signing their life away, you know, the old deal with the devil stuff. That is still going on. It's unbelievable in this day and age that it, that is still going on. It was through the influence of the Beatles that millions of youth around the world were almost overnight turned away from Christ to the gurus of the East. Gurus like the Maharishi Mesh Yogi were given a platform to pass out mantras like candy to the youth. Hippie youth began repeating these mantras, believing that they were in some way scientific, when in fact they were calling out on the names of Hindu gods and demons. Yoga is actually a word that means to yoke and speaks of yoking with pagan gods. Yoga is actually a word that means to yoke and speaks of yoking with pagan gods. God's word warns that these false gods are actually demonic beings, and Jesus Christ warned against the repetitious praying. John Lennon couldn't have made it any clearer when speaking of the Beatles' success and stating, quote, I sold my soul to the devil. Yoko Ono also made a pact with Satan for Lennon and herself not long before Lennon's death. Albert Goldman reported in his book, The Lives of John Lennon, quote, Finally, it was time to consummate all these spells by making a living sacrifice and signing a pact with the devil. For Lena was not a white witch, she was the real thing, a practitioner of black magic. There was no knowing what she planned to do to seal the bond with Lucifer. All she would say was that a witch's blood was die and they had to make ready for the sacrifice. Lena said, quote, we've got to make a sacrifice with the blood of an innocent to the one who has the power. They sacrificed an animal to Satan and Yoko ended up paying to Satan at $16,000. The price though would be far more for serving Satan. It would cost John Lennon his life and his soul. Yoko Ono said of the Beatles, quote, something did happen there. It was as if several people gathered around a table and a ghost appeared. It was that kind of communication. So they were like mediums in a way. It was more than four people. As I said, they were like mediums. They weren't conscious of all they were saying, but it was coming through them. John Lennon and the Beatles were fully antichrist. In Lennon's book, Spaniard in the Works, he speaks of, quote, 
white trash Christian, and he blasphemes the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit by speaking of, quote, the fodder, sock, and Mickey Mose. Beatle press manager Derek Taylor admitted, it's incredible, absolutely incredible. Here are these four boys from Liverpool. They're rude, they're profane, they're vulgar, and they've taken over the world. It's as if they founded a new religion. They're completely antichrist. I mean, I'm antichrist as well, but they're so antichrist they shock me, which isn't an easy thing to do. John Lennon described the frightening experiences which he had that sound much like classical demonic possession to the Beatles' official biographer, Hunter Davies. Lennon stated, quote, If I'm on my own for three days, doing nothing, I almost leave myself completely. I can see my hands and realize they're moving, but it's a robot that's doing it. It's frightening, really. He went on to state also, quote, I felt like a hollow temple filled with many spirits, each one passing through me, each inhabiting me a little time, and then leaving to be replaced by another spirit. As Neil Young sang, there truly is more to the picture than meets the eye. John Lennon said, quote, But my joy is when you're like possessed, like a medium. You know, I'll be sitting around and it'll come in the middle of the night, or at a time when you don't want to do it. That's the exciting part. I don't know who the blank wrote it. I'm just sitting here, and the whole blank song comes out. So it, you're like driven, and you find yourself over on a piano or a guitar, and you put it down because it's been given to you, or whatever it is you tune into. We must be honest and ask ourselves a question. When we allow ourselves to be moved by music of bands like the Beatles and the Rolling Stones, who are we really allowing to move us? Decision making there. Just play. Live with the results. If I play hard, uh, I believe that uh, the man above gonna protect me. And I, uh, the man above gonna protect me. The man above gonna protect me. Hey, you may be saying that you've seen this before, other videos on YouTube, what have you. So this is nothing new. But the difference is, my intention here was to call out celebrities, okay? They know who they are, and us awake know who they are. Now, what celebrities don't understand is they think, oh, I'm gonna sell my soul, I'm gonna get fame and fortune. Why would you trust the father of lies? When it, why would you assume he's gonna tell you the truth? When the fact of the matter is, is he's gonna take your agreement, kill you off early, soul scalp you, and use you as a brand with a clone, with a fallen angel running your body as you get kicked into this fifth dimension, the astral realm. 
Now, Sherry Schreiner explains that this happens all the time, especially with celebrities, because they're the ones that want to be rich and famous, and they're willing to do anything to get there. So ask yourself, why would you trust the father of lies that he's going to hold up his end of the bargain when all he has to do is kill you? He has to get your permission. Don't get me wrong. He has to get your permission. You have to sign on the dotted line. There are some rules to this sick and twisted game, if you will. And as long as you're a willing participant and all you care about is money, the love of money is the root of all evil. As long as you care about money, then he's got you. Be in this world, not of this world. The things of this world is going to get you into big trouble. Now, this recent campfire, that's what they're calling it. Now, this fire, I think, proves a pretty good point that he doesn't care about anybody, including the people that have signed on dotted lines for him. Look at this picture and you can see how many celebrity homes were destroyed. That proves right there that he does not care at all who he hurts, who he kills. He's the father of lies, people. That's what he does. He's going after his own before he goes after saints and the first fruits, the elect. That's why this whole draining the swamp is happening. They're getting rid of the current reptilian cabal to make room for the next one, the new age yelling agenda. Like I've said before in other videos. He doesn't care who he hurts in the process. Even if they're his own children, he doesn't care. I don't know what you need to prove that to you, but if this fire that took wiped out Malibu beach houses, primarily celebrity Malibu beach houses, then don't think for a second Simon Cowles wasn't touched, but others were, like uh, Robin Thicke, Lady Gaga's wasn't touched. Don't think for a second, oh, she's a better Satanist, so her house was saved. No. It just happened that way. But this should prove beyond a shadow of a doubt to celebrities that he doesn't care about you, regardless of what the agreement was. And the biggest deception in all this, according to Sherry Schreiner, he doesn't own your soul until you're dead. So you can renounce. You can renounce Satan. It'll probably cost your life, but so be it. It's like the Great Tribulation when you're going to have to more than likely die for your faith in Father Yahuwah by being beheaded. It's the same thing. If you renounce Satan, you're dying for your faith in Father Yahuwah. It's not over till it's over. Even if you're stuck in the fifth dimension astral realm after being Soul Scout, once your body dies, that's it. You go of one of two places. Think about that. Again, if not me, who? If not now, when? Stay vigilant and fear no evil. God bless.